Hello YouTube and welcome to another Elder Scrolls lore video. This time once again a video in my long running series People of the Elder Scrolls. In this series I examine the lore on a single individual in the Elder Scrolls lore. And today we are talking about the legendary Daedric Pirate King of the Abyssinian Sea, Valak Sane. His story is admittedly a bit of a short one, which is why I decided to release a bonus lore video on same sex relationships in the Elder Scrolls universe earlier this week. You can click the eye icon to watch that if you haven't already or of course go to my channel page. That said, it's time for us to kick off with this video on the legendary Daedric Pirate King. The Song of the Pirate King states as follows. Poke out your eyes lad, pour lead in your ears. Those sails portrayed madness, dark horror and fear. Abandon your lasses, your ship and your gold. Blood on the water, Felek this way comes. A noose from the ringing, a plank from the boards. Do yourself in, don't try at crossing swords. Mercy's not a shipmate among that heartless horde. Blood on the water, the Pirate King comes. Stout Empire Galleon or Swift Elven Skiff. They everyone want splinter and just as soon sink. But only after crew and captain have their fun. Blood on the water, your days are done. He'll tear your gut and he'll eat your heart raw. His eyes gleam red and his heart will never thaw. Mark well these words, you quaking babes. Blood on the water follows Captain Velak Sane. This is the song of the pirate captain Velak Sane, once a legendary pirate captain who was usually found in the Abyssinian seas, also known as the Pirate King of the Abyssinian. We don't know what Oblivion realm he came from or for what reason he came to Mundus and subsequently to Tamriel, but we know that once he was here on Mundus he decided to become a pirate together with his Daedric crew. We don't know when exactly he came to Mundus, but we do know that he was already terrorizing the Abyssinian waves during the second era in the Elder Scrolls Online's time period. Because we can find him in the Elder Scrolls Online where he's helping Molag Bal defend the Dark Anchors. Molag Bal then introduces him as the Pirate King who will spell your doom and he drops the Pirate King's armor when we have defeated them. In addition to that you get the achievement Dromora Pirate King Slayer if you manage to slay him at one of the anchors. The fact that at this early moment in time he was already referred to as the Pirate King must mean that he has already been plundering for quite some time, enough to build somewhat of a reputation. In addition to that we know that like a lot of other Daedra he simply regenerates and returns to Tamriel when he's slain. I say this because we can slay him in the Elder Scrolls Online only for him to reappear later in written sources in other eras. Because we learned that presumably around the 3rd era, maybe early 4th era, he sank some Imperial ships off the coast of Skyrim in the Sea of Ghosts. The plunder of these Imperial ships was apparently so lucrative that there was too much gold for him to stash on the ships that they had. So he hid some magically protected treasure on an island in the Sea of Ghosts. We can actually find the location of this raid close by the treasure as several sunken ships are nearby in the ship graveyard Pilgrim's Trench. We don't know when this raid happened but we do know that sometime after it he was apparently defeated by someone and then sealed away by mages using a powerful binding spell so that he could no longer regenerate and do damage to Tamriel's trading system. We don't know the details of how he got sealed away or by whom he was defeated unfortunately. An undetermined amount of time after his binding however, at least more than a century before the events of Skyrim, four students at the College of Winterhold learn of the legend of the Pirate King. These four students are named Baldwin, Katarina, Pithy and Trayoi. They devise a way to summon the Pirate King from his binding position. We don't know exactly why they want this, but they started at, at, at the ritual anyway. We know that these students must have lived longer than a century ago and tried to summon the Pirate King longer than a century ago, as at the time of this ritual the College of Winterhold was apparently led by a man named Archmage Sadoth, who was an Archmage even before Archmage Deneth, who was Savas Aaron's predecessor during the Great Collapse. However, this summoning ritual by the students goes horribly wrong when they do it and the summoning fails. The four students have tried to bite off more than they could chew as the conjuration magic needed for this ritual is way more powerful than any of them could anticipate and they were simply not strong enough to sustain the ritual. All four of the students died due to the energy drains on their bodies contracting conjuration burns 
which is a very nasty phenomenon where your skin bubbles and gets peeled off in the process. This happens when a student tries to do a conjuration spell which is way too powerful for them according to the documents that we can find. And to be honest I'm just happy that we only find their skeletons instead of see this because I think it's pretty gross. The four student bodies are then found by an employee of the college who dismantles the summoning area and that was to be the end of it, but it wasn't the end of it, since the Dragonborn can find the summoning site and then reconstruct the summoning. The Dragonborn can then summon the Pirate King using the rings of the dead students which are held in the Arcanium and then choose to break the binding spell in the process of this ritual. Completing the ritual is actually an unmarked quest in Skyrim. You have to find the mysterious Daedric Gauntlet in the College of Winterhold Midden. This is the gloomy basement of the College of Winterhold where all the illegal experiments took place over the years. There you can find the skeletons of the students that attempted to summon the Pirate King. And you can find a report from the employee of the college saying that he hid the magical rings for the ritual away in the Arcanium. If you don't find this report from the employee, you will never know what to do. And since the quest is an unmarked quest, a lot of people have never even figured out that it is a quest or that you can do anything. Making this one of the more obscure quests in Skyrim. You can then meet the legendary Pirate King himself and choose to fight him or let him go. When you let him go, he lets you in on the location of some of the stuffed away treasure of his raid on the Imperial ships which has too much gold to carry. You are then just to, you know, find the treasure and it'll magically reveal itself as it was magically protected. It doesn't really matter if you kill him or free him. Free him is the best, I think, since you get a decent reward for it in gold. It doesn't really matter. However, since you already broke the binding spell by completing the ritual, and thus if you kill him, the most likely outcome is that he regenerates again only to terrorize the waves once again. Leaving you with the same outcome as letting him go, except that now you don't have part of the treasure. While that's almost everything that we know about him, we also know that he will most likely go back to the Abyssinian Sea once we freed him, or once he has regenerated after we kill him. Meaning that there's a chance that we might see him in Hammerfell if the Elder Scrolls 6 really takes place there, like most people seem to think now. I think that would be pretty awesome, I have to admit. Imagine if we maybe encounter a ship filled with Daedric pirates just plundering poor merchant ships. I would find that pretty cool, and especially since I really like this character. I mean, what's there not to like? He uses piratey words like Some booty and God plunder. I don't know, first time that I encountered him I always found him extremely hilarious for some reason and after learning that we can actually trace his legacy all the way back to Elder Scrolls Online, so to the second era, I was actually pretty excited to do this video. I mean, he's basically a mystery since we don't know anything about him or, or about his origins. He could be on Tamriel for any reason, I mean, usually Dremora like him gets sent by a Daedric Prince, but I can't really imagine a Daedric Prince sending a Dremora to Tamriel to then be like, yo, you should be a captain of a pirate ship and then just terrorize the people. I would think that he would have had some mission and then just forsaken the mission. I don't know. I found it really funny to think about and I just find him a really interesting and funny character. And I think he's pretty underappreciated since I haven't seen much people talk about him on the internet. That said, I do hope that you did enjoy this video. If you did, consider sticking around for the next Elder Scrolls lore video. I put them online every Thursday around 6pm Western European time. I hope you will be considering to like this video and subscribing if you liked it. If you want personal contact with me to talk about lore or whatever, you can always shoot me a DM on Instagram or Discord or join my Discord server to, you know, talk with other people that watch my videos. Before I end this video, allow me to vocally thank my top patrons Bernardo Binda, Metalloid 1v1, Hayden Barnes and Gabriel Binda. These guys, along with the other awesome people on screen, make my weekly lore series possible. And also allow me to thank Mr. Christmas, who basically does all my Elder Scrolls Online screenshots since, you know, my Elder Scrolls Online still isn't working. And Bethesda still hasn't patched it. And, I mean, that's awesome. And with that said, it's my cue to tell you that I will see you coming Thursday with a new Elder Scrolls lore video. Bye bye.